I'm here with Stefan of Tolkundra to talk about Hail the Abyss, the new record coming out May 19th on Napalm Records. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for joining me for this chat. Hey, Bedron. Pleasure talking to you again. And uh, yes, we're talking about the new record. And uh, we also have a couple of news regarding more shows, more tours in North America. So let's get this started. Okay, so let's get this started. So before we talk about the record, <laughs> let's talk about the last tour because... I saw you guys in Toronto. We didn't get a chance to chat. You, you were super busy. You had double duties. So first off, how was that tour for you with Flash God Apocalypse? Well, the overall tour was very successful. We had uh, with Flash God Apocalypse and Obscura two headliners that definitely brought a certain draw to the table. So the venues have been quite filled. But also Wolfhard and Tulkandra being supporting the both main bands. Um they had their, their own draw and that was very, very interesting to see because each band definitely was was worth the time they, they played. And um, I think all bands benefit, had a big, big benefit of the tour. But aside the whole business thing, I really loved hanging out with both Wolfheart and also Flash Good Apocalypse since there was a mutual respect towards uh, each band and uh, I would tour with those bands in a heartbeat again. It was really, really, uh, on a, from a personal level, a very successful and nice tour. And when you, you've you been in Toronto, um, all Canadian shows have been sold out. And I think in total we had nine or 10 shows that have been filled to the max, so sold out. And that just proves that the entire lineup and uh, well, the bands really, really draw a lot of people so that was really a full success for all bands involved and uh, couldn't be better how did you manage because you have two bands two sets sure you have wolf heart in between so you have a little bit of a break between the thol set and the obscura set but how did you keep your voice fresh considering how many shows you guys played and you're technically doing two shows a night it's just a matter of discipline. So there was no no big partying, no hanging out too long around. And of course, the, the break in between both bands that helped. But uh, similar to a drummer who's cooling down, the, the voice is something like a, a organic, uh, an organ as well. So you have to take care of it a little bit. But um, we did a similar tour in 2020 with Obscura and Tulkandra, but in Europe. So I knew what what I'm going to do. So it was not uh, not a decision I did out of the blue. So I, I put some thought about it, <clears throat> but it worked out well. I mean, we haven't had to cancel any show. I haven't had any any issues or problems. Of course, to be honest, I, I was tired at a certain point. But uh, on the other hand, it was it, there was so much adrenaline all over the place, and we had a very good crew as well, and. Uh, the, the production for both bands, for the, the main bands, was uh, kind of similar. And we built up the entire thing that everyone had some time to rest in between. So we just made it happen. And again, it's a matter of discipline and uh, just knowing what you're doing. This was the first time that Falk Hunter tour in North America, if I'm not mistaken. How, how was, from your standpoint, being in on stage looking at the audience, how, how was the overall audience reception to you guys? Mm, kind of mixed of course you can tell the, the band is 20 years old so some people have been aware of the band we also draw a couple of old school diehard fans that uh, reached out to us uh, in the first place when we just announced the tour that they're very happy seeing the band for the very first time but i would say most of uh, the attendant people didn't know at all the band before so maybe they, they listened to i don't know one or two songs but they didn't know it so um for us it was from point zero um the idea to introduce the band in front of a certain audience so we went there with balls of steel and iron will and just made the best show we can we can pull off and since the bands all the bands helped each other quite well even the first band and also wolfhard have been able to pull off a real show like full backdrops full set uh, enough space on on stage and that absolutely helped to also well get a certain introduction for the man overall the, i would say tulkandra had a, a very very good reception for a, an opening band we just played five songs half an hour in total 
but that uh, turned out very, very good. And uh, I, I didn't talk to too many people because, you, you know, I, I played a second show later tonight. But uh, the feedback we got and also uh, the band members got has been entirely positive. And we are also working on another tour for early next year to play a full set, not only half an hour. Exciting times, I must say. I, I was super excited to see you guys on that tour and to see you guys perform. Being the first time, I know I, I'm not going to get, or at least up until now, we didn't have any chances to see you guys. So I was not going to miss that chance. And I was taken back by you. Uh, outstanding performance. I knew a lot of people in the crowd that really came to see you guys. So don't, oh, awesome. so don't sell yourself short, at least in Toronto. I, I know a lot of people that came just for Thalcundra. Everything else was a bonus, but they were really there because they didn't want to miss this landmark event of you guys playing in North America for the first time. Now, I want to ask you about the album. Fifth album for the band, is there something on this record that you see that sets it apart from the from the previous four records? First of all, yes and no. So we never changed our style. Since the first day we play this old school Swedish black and death metal with certain melodies and harmonies, twin guitars and all that. So that is something we never changed. What actually changed from this album to the previous one is uh, the fact that we that we included a little bit more of diversity. So we we thought about, okay, we are, we are all fans. So we are listening to the, the albums uh, ourselves. We also listen to albums of all the other bands and we want to be more or less entertained from front to end. So the idea was not to write a song that sounds like another song on the record. That's um, the whole idea of the, of the album. So we didn't get only faster, like most of the bands, faster, wider, and, and um, more of everything. We also went the other direction. There are some songs that are that have an entirely different pace. Like on the wings of cosmic fire, for example, is more uh, motorhead, satiric, and uh, Celtic frost kind of kind of song. And uh, the very last song, the final closer, is almost in in the area of doom metal. Still, you hear which band is playing, but uh, we also went even slower. That is based on uh, the title track of the previous record. A dying wish we thought okay this is going to be the the, the slowest songs uh, the slowest song slowest composition we ever do in the band but uh in the end we thought okay how much more extreme how how slow you can go that's something we wanted to include so overall uh we have like 45 46 minutes of music that is simply interesting to listen to it's again there, there's nothing uh repetitive within the entire record and I really like the album. We have all the different songwriters. All the, I mean, you hear more or less uh, who's writing which parts or which which songs, and this added together within the entire band is something that uh, that differs a little bit from the first three records, because on the Dying Wish and Hey the Abyss we have uh, two guitars who mainly write the music, while the entire band works on all the arrangements. But still, you hear the 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 kind of signature, the the kind of uh, um, yeah history where everybody is coming from. While Mariano Delastic, the other guitarist, has a very very harsh black metal background with most of aggressive and blast beat uh, songs, like very very sharp riffing. I'm more the mid tempo melodic guy. But together, you know, um, it's the it's the sum of the tiny little details that make the album interesting in my opinion yeah the album i know every band when you're releasing a new record the new record is the best album that you've released i mean every band feels that way but i honestly feel that way about this record it's a it's it's a way more engaging album from start to end it's a record that also feels shorter than what it than what it really is and when you have an album that feels shorter it means that you're losing track of time and really enjoying the experience of going from first to last song and that's exactly how this album feels. So to me, it feels like more maybe a complete album that can be, you know, easily digested from start to end. Excellent. Thank you. That's the biggest compliment uh, you can get as an artist. Well, if this is the best album we ever did, I don't know. I mean, everybody uh, gets a different introduction to each band. And usually it's the first album you hear from a band. You, you become a fan of that is always the best one so maybe we reached uh, a new audience with this north american tour and a lot of people think 
Hey, the Abyss will be the, the ultimate record of Vulcano. Who knows? I mean, we don't want to repeat ourselves, though we still play the same kind of music. But still, within this field, you, you are always able to, to write new songs or good songs or maybe even better songs. For ourselves, again, we, we are still fans of this kind of music. We, we love it. And uh, if we want to write a record with mostly mid-tempo songs, we are going to do it. If we are... Uh, if we want to include even more, I don't know, more diversity, whatever that will be on the next record, we will do it. We we are not bound to anything, but we want to keep the tradition of keeping at least the style where we are in. And of course, we always want to write better songs and uh, have more ideas and something, but that's something you, you cannot force at all. It's just uh, uh, the sum of all the variables, the sum of the, the lineup, the, the, the vibe you have. I don't know if we are going... To play a couple of more shows in the next years or not maybe we have a break of half a year who knows we we don't overthink everything with this band so we just uh enjoy the wave and uh ride on it and well enjoy playing in a band together so yeah, who so knows what is on the next record <laughs> uh, one of the things that i really enjoyed uh on this album was was those acoustic elements that you guys incorporated throughout the record did you have something specific in mind that you wanted those elements to offer the overall sound? Um, they have a, a certain function. It's basically um, a technical point to enhance the contrast between the songs. If you have 10 songs, all of the same pace or all, all of the same vibe in the album, it's a little bit tiring, but those tiny little pieces are simply like a, um, a theater piece where you sometimes have a preludium or uh, a part in between that, uh, well, lights up everything. So a blast beat song after a blast beat song might be a little bit tiring, but if you have this tiny sensitive part of acoustic in between, uh, the second song might hit a little bit more harder. So on purpose, we have those, those uh, tiny little instrumentals just for... Well, taking a breath in between. How, how do you manage to balance the overall darkness that the sound of, of the album has, but with a good definition and sound experience at the same time? Because some bands, when, they, when they're creating their soundscape, sometimes the darkness of the sound impacts almost the quality of the record because it, it dirties up the waters and it's really hard to see the definition of the guitars, the drums, bass, and vocals. So... Is this something that you work on when it comes to the production of the album, or is this something that you work on even before that? In my opinion, each production starts with the songs. So when you write whatever composition, when you when you work on uh, whatever song, you already know, okay, this might be the chorus, this might be the break, this might be a certain certain arrangement. And with that, you already can hear or see uh, the entire arrangement in front of your eye. Okay, so here is a very busy acoustic part with uh, distorted uh, rhythm guitars underneath it. So let's reduce the vocals and vice versa. So it's always a matter of frequency. Uh, frequencies you, you need to balance out and uh, the matter of information. I have the concept, I try to uh, highlight every instrument at a certain spot. If there's a, a bass interlude, whatever band it is, it's, uh, that's uh, universal, whatever um song it is i always try to highlight everything but not at the same time so with tulkandra it's uh, it's similar if we have one of those twin guitar harmonies i want to have this in focus and everything else will uh, be reduced when we have a very fast and aggressive song i make sure the the tonal information of each song uh, of each uh, guitar line uh, is making it through and i don't add i don't know an, another uh, keyboard, uh, cor uh, choir, or whatever layer on top of it. So it's always a matter a matter of uh, what you want to highlight, uh, what should be in focus in this certain part of a composition. And the production is always the, the last piece of the puzzle. But in this case, we, we worked with Dan Swanu at Unisound Studio, and he understands our band very well. He understands that we are not, um, we are not a band that wants to be perfect. Actually, it's the imperfection that makes uh, Tulkandra a little bit standing out because we don't polish anything. There are barely any edits on, on the record. There are even some, I wouldn't even call it 
mistakes, but uh, it's a certain rawness in the acoustic guitars and the in the rhythm guitars. We we don't put everything into the grids because we want to keep that original vibe and feeling of each musician. If you put everything into the grid, if you use only I don't know presets on any guitar sounds, you would sound like everyone else, and we want to prevent that. We we are rather sounding a little bit more raw, a little bit more rock and roll, but we keep the the fingerprint of each musician. And I think when uh, when you ask, okay, defining the darkness within the, the album, I think this starts all if you're original and if you're honest with what you're doing. And in this case, we are as honest as possible. Of course, the bass drum is triggered, yes, to a certain degree, but that's um, just a technical matter of what we have to do in this kind of music. But everything else, we just keep it raw. And that makes it uh, more digestible, I think. At least that's my opinion on the matter. I, I agree with you. And and talking about something about this record that it stood out to me, and I I I, and I feel like this is the Folk Under album that has the most memorable riffs, the most memorable melodies, the most memorable hooks, catchy choruses. Like, I mean, for for an album that has so much darkness and so much heaviness, obviously a lot of melody as well, but that it has those elements. This album just stands out. Each song, the moment you press play, you know exactly which song you're listening to. They are very distinct, even though at the same time, they're very equal to one another. Do, do you see this album standing a little bit uh, outside of the box when it comes to those elements and being so memorable, so hooky and so catchy? Well, there's the golden rule. Don't borrow us, bring us to the chorus. <laughs> and this is um this is something i really love but we we tend not to overthink everything with the band it's more the vibe where we are going to and how we write the songs the the parts i'm um uh, well i'm writing they're, they're usually based on on a very strong chorus and a very um clear arrangement but we don't have to overthink it. Sometimes there, there are some parts that, that don't make any sense, but we still keep it because we love it. They're, 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 they don't have any function, but we still keep them. And uh, this keeps it a little bit more natural. I mean, we are not the pop band. We just do what we want to do. And on this new record, everybody just put on the table what he had. And together we worked on this record. It's not a one-man show. It's not like two persons or three in the band. It's all the four members that work on uh, on the songs. And on the previous record, we had a different basis. Even it's the basis that's something you don't hear that much in, in our productions, but they changed the pace, in my opinion. And uh, even on, on details like small melody lines, every, some more sublime, uh, not that functional ideas, but it's, uh, it's more the, the, the devil in the details, so to say, that helps everything standing out a little bit. And to be honest, as far as I understand, everybody in the band is very happy with the album. And uh, we're going to play the entire thing this Friday on the release show in our hometown. And then we just celebrate it together. With the fans. So it's going to be a great evening, I'm sure. I'm sure you're looking forward to. Uh, when, when it comes to the creative process of, of this Tholkundra record, and even previous records, is there something that you really enjoy as part of that process and something that you really hate as part of that process? The thing I really love is to see and also hear how all the layers build up like an entire cathedral of sounds, especially when you add uh, the second or the third harmony layer on a, on a whole guitar arrangement and you put it into uh, uh, the panorama. Where, and you have like a uh, nice studio, uh, studio near field monitors. That's lovely. That's really lovely. If if you really put all the faders in and then the sun is shining, that's a, that's a feeling I, I love since I picked up a guitar 20 years ago. So that's something that is brilliant. The worst thing that can happen is uh, uh, broken equipment, broken hard disks, like basic things that can really ruin your day, but that barely happens. So there are a couple of things I really don't like to do. 
for example, waiting half a year until the record is out. <laughs> <laughs> but but we are uh, we are all in the same boat. We are all in the same boat. But uh, if I wouldn't like it, what we are doing, I wouldn't do it. So I'm very pragmatic when it comes to that. I love writing music. I also love uh, playing live shows with uh, the bandmates. And actually, the bandmates are not bandmates. They're real friends. And, well, socializing with your friends and having the possibility to put out music, traveling around the world, that's a jackpot. When you think music, do you think the music, oh, this this song, I'm going to sit down, this song is going to be an obscure song, or this song is going to be a Falkundra song. Do, do you think that way, or does the music kind of dictate uh, which one is going to be? How, how does it work for you? I never write only one song for one band and then switch to another. That's uh, I tried it, but it's not my my kind of uh, way to work. I always work on one album from front to end. For example, if I would say, okay, we're writing a new Tokando record, let's sit down and I take everything else aside. I'm not going to write uh, any scores or anything for any other project, any any other band. I only do this and keep my focus on that. Same with Obscura. If I say, okay, within the next half a year, we are working on a new Obscura record, I'm not going to write a single riff for Tokando. It's completely separated and somehow that works for me the best. Just to keep um, your focus on one thing at a time. Whenever we do a Falkundra video on the channel, or whenever I talk to people, like I was talking to people at the show, uh, there's always another band that gets named, which is Dissection. Uh, how much of an impact have Dissection had on the sound and on Falkundra as a band? A very big, a very, very big impact. But it's not only Dissection, but I understand why... Uh, why fans or people that listen to the, the band the very first time name Dissection because they have been the biggest band in this genre. I think they've been the only band in the 90s that made it to the United States. And all the other bands like Unanimated, Sacramentum, The Moaning, Dawn, uh, McGreening, they, they always stayed underground. I mean, it's all underground, but they, they stayed in Sweden and perhaps played a couple of shows in, in Central Europe, but that's it. I think the only band that really made it out for some kind of international success was Dissection. And so it's it's kind of common. On the other hand, we also play with that because we have all the records uh, uh, granted with a blue artwork. We keep the Reaper and all of that. So it's like a back and forth. For me, I don't mind. I really don't mind. If people compare us to the band, if they discuss about uh, if we are a rip-off, if we are standing on our own feet. That's fine with me. I don't mind. I don't mind. As long as they're listening. That's the point. That's exactly the point. Just listen to the music and decide yourself. Yeah. As long as they're listening, buying merch, buying tickets and coming to the shows, the rest is all gravy. And on that note, I have a last question for you. You teased us at the beginning of this chat about future uh, tour dates. So what do you have in your, in your hands? Because May 19th, this new album drops. When you guys played in North America, the album wasn't out yet. So what can fans expect from Falkandra? Well, this year, it seems uh, like we are playing only festivals in Germany. And uh, for early 2024, we are working on a full headlining North American run, followed by a European tour. But we are working on that since, since quite a while. We tried to make it happen. But Tulkandra will never become a real touring band. First of all, the other three members have regular jobs. And on the other hand, we want to keep it special. Every time Tulkandra is playing a festival, a small show or something, we are very picky, to be honest. We don't play any time. It took us 20 years to come over to the States. <laughs> so so that, um, we want to keep it special. So when we're doing a tour, first of all, we want to do it right with the right package. And second, um, we also wanna wanna enjoy it. So the 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 conditions have to be correct. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about playing good shows, uh, good venues, and uh, well, make make it somehow happen. And the same is uh, the fact for Europe. So, in case we're working on a, on a European tour, that's the plan for next year. It won't be a long run. It won't be like a six or nine week tour. It's a short run. And when we are going to do it, we put everything we have into it. Like personally, 
of course, financially, we are we are talking about underground tours. We just want to celebrate it. We want to, if we are going on tour, we want to do it the best way possible, no matter what. Well, I'm looking forward to those dates being announced and seeing you guys play a headlining tour. Uh, hopefully, you play Hail the Abyss, or at least most of it, um, because I, I, I'm dying to hear some of these songs live. So uh, I'm sure it's going to be a huge part of the set list anyway. So uh, something to definitely look forward to. Stefan, thank you very much for your time. It's always a pleasure talking to you, seeing you during that Volcandra. You're not doing double duty, so I will definitely will bug you and we'll, we'll have a little bit of a chat in person. Uh, I didn't want it to ruin your 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 incredible vocal cords uh, last time you were in Toronto. So we'll do that in the future. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you very much for the interview. And uh would be a pleasure to see you in your Toronto or anywhere else in North America. Take care, man. All the best. Thank you. Bye-bye.